<clears throat> Mike check one two. Welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show, episode number one six three. Sorry, reaching there to get a coffee. I think it's one six three. Should be one six three. Uno says tres. Uno dos tres. Right? Yeah, I think that's how you say in Spanish. But anyway, welcome back with me, your host Agostino Zynga. Happy Monday to all you mofos, wherever you may be. Happy. Future Monday, happy past Monday, happy Mondays all in between. Hope you guys are feeling well. I'm feeling good. Anyway, um, yeah, it's Monday, man. The weekend's finally over. I had a bit of a I had a bit of a good one, a bit of a nice one. I went out, out well, I went out with the intention to go see Steffi play at Origins of Mixed Garage, but I ended up getting dragged um um by another group of friends to go to an after party um at someone's house that lived near me and then I ended up getting lost and took me ages to get back home um which i kind of regret now you know when, I, I think um i think i only kind of got distracted and went there because the ticket was so cheap to go to a mixed garage well relatively cheap in comparison to the other techno parties you might see in london so i think i bought the tickets for around 10 to 15 pounds i forgot how much the total price i bought it a while back right so i wasn't that bothered about the ticket but i think in in, in looking back i should have probably went to mixed garage and seen steffi play i'm a big fan of her um yours uh the the track yours are uh, played a lot when it first came out um i think i i meant to see her at panorama bar once too but i never got in so it was a it was, it was an issue i should have probably went to see her play but anyway ne next time i'll come next time i'll prioritize that because usually as much as um, i complain about london ticket prices for techno clubs and all that sort of malarkey if you think about it objectively i think you're probably much let's see how to phrase this um think about just if you if you go to a nightclub right and you go to see a dj play you're most probably like you're most likely to have a better time than you are hanging out with people um jumping around bar to bar i think in general personally in my opinion i don't think you can do it any other way around because honestly like think about it think about it think about it um you know the jump around from bar to bar is very very dependent is highly highly de you're, you're highly reliant on the group you're with um whereas in the nightclub that you go to right um first of all when you're going to a nightclub you're most likely going to see someone that you want to go see right you're not going to go see a random you're going to go see a dj that you like someone that you admire someone that you think is good so for the most part half of the let's say over half of the event is already sorted for you because you're seeing somebody that you want to go see um but then the other side of it is obviously dependent on the crowd right sometimes you can go to a club and you could you know be amongst the whole group of I don't know, twenty I don't know, twenty five thousand lads, right, all from Manchester that come down to throw shapes and stuff and shout in the crowd whenever a DJ drops a big tune, right? That could be annoying for some people. Or it's full of really um I don't know, um young girls, right, who are always screaming and running around and shit. That can be annoying. So I get the crowd can be a bit weird or the bar can take it can the bar can be super busy and it's not that many staff and it could be taking ages to get a drink. Cool. But I think by and large, your night is sorted because you know you got that out of the way. Um but anyway, what was I gonna say? Yeah, uh, but yeah, so I think nightclubs are probably better to go to if you have if you want to have a guaranteed night out. When I when you go with randoms, um, it's a bit hip hit and miss flip flip of a coin. So I think yeah, next time probably won't do that again. But you know, say lovey, I don't necessarily go out with mates that often anyway. Um, so this is probably just a little bit one off. So next time, anyway, uh, weekend's been pretty pretty cool, pretty chill. Um, United drew nil nil with Liverpool. I watched a little bit of the um ufc and um you know i think with the united liverpool thing like it, it goes to show i think a lot of people don't really like to say it because I, I guess for the most part they have a vested interest in making sure the premier league has the reputation of being the best league in the world and all this sort of bullshit right but i think by and large right i think if you look at the if you look at who's top and you look at who consistently wins the premier league and you look at how they perform in europe compared to the other teams that win their leagues you have to say that i think in my opinion the Premier League is quite overrated, especially at the top end. I think middle, the middle of the, the middle, um, the kind of the teams outside the top six could probably compete as well as any other teams already around the world. I think for the most part, but I think the, the top six is quite overrated because I think you have to think about United's level performance, right? And you have to think about Chelsea's ability to always kind of finish, well, not always, but you know, consistently be in and amongst it, right? They kind of drop down here and there when Mourinho was there, but for the most part, they, they tend to hang around, right? Even though they don't really, you know, have the squad that people would think would be challenging for those kind of things, right? And even Arsenal, for a certain respect, right? They've kind of gone through ebbs and flows. They've had to kind of, you know, ride the wave post um, Wenger. You know, Emery hasn't really settled down and got his, you know, his squad that he wants, blah, blah, blah. blah. But I think United Liverpool game is a real 
evidence for me that the league's overrated because you know Liverpool are the strong favourites to win the league, right? They're gonna hope they in their eyes they hopefully want to break, um, you know, break the mould and win and win a Premier League after so many years of not winning it, so many years of not winning it. They've got a manager who kind of you know very very much so, um, is plays into the Liverpool DNA. He's got a squad playing the way he wants to play. They have attacking talent, especially the, the final third. They have great attacking talent. Um, for first eleven, they're, they're pretty solid. Maybe options on the bench, they're a bit short. Man is maybe securing a couple of others, but in general, they're kind of you know they're playing really attractive football, and they're and they've and they've in the last few in the last couple of years they found a way of winning ugly right that's what something people always say about Liverpool as a kind of um, criticism right they could they could win playing their attacking pressing um, breakneck counter attacking football but they couldn't necessarily just grind out a win right and part of being a champion part of having a championship season is the ability to beat teams when you shouldn't beat them right that's 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 proof that you're a champion right because most teams most big teams can perform against the other big team you can you can, you can step your game up on a big night right when it's on TV or the lights are on but can you step your game up away Way to some lowly club where there's no TV cameras and shit. Oh, it's not going to be televised on a regular TV. Can you do that? Like a midweek game against, like, I don't know, uh, Burnley, right? Those are the kind of games you have to win. Ugly. Um, but they've been able to do that. But I think if you look at the game against Man United Liverpool, I think it's a very because, you know, United, we've really struggled this last couple of years, right? Or maybe even, even more so since Perth Fergie, right? Um, the players have had to put up with Mourinho's. I don't know midlife crisis and his kind of weird management style. They obviously didn't they didn't like um, Mourinho's obviously going through his pop, his, his issues, which then affected the way the team played. The club atmosphere was really down, and you know Odegaard and Social was basically hired to put smiles back on faces. Cool, no worries. But that kind of level of turnaround and the ability to perform against these top teams is obviously proof that Odegaard and Social is doing a good job, and also proof that United aren't that far away, right? I think we're still not, you know, we're not, we're not, we're probably the third best team in the league, right? I think overall, in terms of form, in terms of players, in terms of potential, maybe we're tied with Tottenham, right? Um, uh, in terms of third place, but I think for Liverpool to be the, you know, the leaders, and Man City are kind of close behind them, and for us to hold them to a draw and look quite comfortable at it, especially when we had three injuries in the first half, right? Goes to show that we're not too far off, and that Liverpool are maybe a bit overrated. I think in general. And again, I think for most journalists or most pundits out there, they want to make this story that the Premier League is the best league in the world because obviously it makes their job it makes their job more covetable and it makes sure that they're of, of better influence. But I don't think so. I don't really believe it is the best, personally. In my opinion. In my opinion. Um, I just think the level of players that get attracted to the Premier League outside the top teams isn't that high compared to the other teams, especially if you look at midfield talent, attacking talent. I think if you're a South American player and you have this prospect of playing in Milan or playing in fucking, I don't know, in Manchester, Liverpool, you're obviously going to pick Milan, right? Even though those two clubs are big and they've got great history. Like, you, who wants to fucking live in Manchester or, or Liverpool, right? If you're South American, it makes no sense, which is why most of them come to London um, or they go to Man City where, they go, where they're going to pay you, you know, the big bucks um, salary-wise. So I think that is a big issue in general. And maybe just the level of competition maybe is a big issue. Um, I don't know, but there is, there is something there to be said about, you know, is the league that good if United can somehow hold Liverpool to a drill and look quite comfortable at it just, you know, after only, I don't know, a couple of months of Ole Gunnar Solskjaer being in charge. I'm not too sure if that's necessarily a good thing, but hey ho, what do I know? And in a bit of UFC, I watched Thiago Santos fight that um, Polish guy. I don't, I can't pronounce his name. Don't get me wrong. Um, Thiago Santos looks like a fucking problem, doesn't he? Right? He looks like a fucking problem. Absolute beast. Great knockout power. Maybe his ground game isn't probably as good as it should be. If he does go and end up facing a John Jones, he might get smothered in that regard. Uh, but he looks fucking crazy, doesn't he? I love his tattoos on his back. That Celtic cross, the hammer in the front. He just looks like he looks like the quintessential, you know, um, UFC fighter, innit? Just ripped to shit and just will fuck you up. Do you know what I mean? Hands like fucking boulders. Um, but yeah, and that, and that was it for the most part. Kept it quite humble. Kept it quite close. Um, there's a bit, of, there's been a bit of an update on the Jesse Smollett thing. I know, I know, I know, it's getting exhaustive, but you know, this is the nature of the social commentary game. You go over and over and over topics that intrigue you, and you fucking, you know, rinse that onion rinse that onion can you rinse an onion would people rinse onions i don't know what what, what i want to say there no you squeeze that lemon until it's dry <laughs> rinse how did i get how did i get a lemon and an onion confused in my head oh yeah what do you squeeze to get all the juices out an onion who thinks that well there probably is somebody out there do people do you think people people out there that drink onion juice must be right at the moment the brunette is talking about 
celery. Have you have you heard about that? The celery juice thing that's happening. I think it's a you know been purported or been uh, um, promoted by um, the Kardashian clan and all that sort of malarkey. Um, talk about the Kardashian clan. You see that fucking rumor about the whole Jordan Woods thing with um, Chloe Kardashian's um, um, husband, the basketballer name Tristan Thomas. Heard about that shit? That sounds fucking nuts, isn't it? But again, it sounds nuts. But is that our business? No. Right? Why do we know these things? Sometimes I, I wonder, like. Ugh, why do we know these things? Why? Why do we know these things? And why people so... I know people get interested in gossip, right? But gossip is only... Gossip only exists when someone says something. When somebody tells. Somebody informs. Who's informing us of this news? Like, that's horrible, isn't it? Like, come on, man. We're all involved in their relationship. It was embarrassing already enough when, you know, the first thing happened with Chloe and her husband. But, you know, people go through what they go through. It's their relationship. If she wants to take him back, let her take him back, isn't it? But then the core public opinion judges you, what you're doing, how you're doing it. It's just a strange, strange world we live in, isn't it, right? Where they're having to, like, maneuver in this world. And, uh, of course, they've picked it. It's their fucking profession. And, you know, it probably... I think, you know, people judging what you do in your relationship is different. It's probably a lot easier to deal with than having to work in a fucking salt mine, right? So it's not that big of an issue. And I think, by and large, as well, people don't necessarily bring this up in public, right? It's not something... It's just stuff that a TMZ report is going to shout at you down the street. You might get some embarrassing or some weird looks when you're in, when you're in fucking, I don't know, um, Irwan, right? Or Whole Foods. But for the most part, no one's really going to come to you and say, oh my God, I'm so sorry about what happened. Oh, how do you take that man back? No one's going to say nothing to you in public. You just have to kind of deal with the kind of, you know, the social shame on social media, which is not that big of a deal because you're going to get loads of sicker fan fans that are going to flood your fucking feed and be like, oh, we support you. We're with you. You're so brave for having a boyfriend that cheats on you all the time. Um, that's, that's probably what people are going to do. But again, it's just, you know, why do we know this? I don't know, man. I just hope we get to a point where, you know, we just stop knowing about people's business and we just concentrate on making sure we have our lives in order. Because sometimes I think about, I think to myself, like the people, the people that sit there and absorb this news and comment on it on social and really get invested on it and reply back and forth and get into arguments with strangers about somebody you don't know, right? Is insane. It's just insane. I just feel so, imagine that life, like you cannot have your stuff in, I just think it's unlikely that you could be commenting on this with any kind of level of detail or care and have your life in order. It just seems unlikely. Very, very much unlikely. Like, um, I just don't, I, I, I just don't believe it. I'm sorry, I don't believe it. I just don't believe it. Imagine. You spend all that time arguing about her relationship and you have your life in order. You know, you're smashing it. You've got the career of your choice. You've got the career that you want. Um, you're working in a great company, you're making changes, your you know, your relationship's all good, you've got kids that are amazing, that I respect you, that are doing good things outside, you have a great social group of friends, your finances are in order, you go you go on holidays when you like, your health is in check. I don't think that's I don't think honestly, I don't think that's possible. You can't spend that much time worrying about somebody else's relationship and still having your life in order and commenting on it on, on, it on social media. This doesn't happen, in, in my opinion. But again, maybe I could be wrong. But yeah, um, that whole thing is a mess. And but again, it's not really a mess. It's a mess, but not really a mess because it makes me always think, huh? There, re- some people need to really respect that that thing is a talent, right? That thing of being a social media reality TV show person, it's a fucking talent. But people don't want to respect it because I guess maybe the Kardashians are maybe a little bit annoying and they might have, um you know, weird motives and they're maybe promoting um, an ideal that a lot of people don't really like, blah, blah, blah. But I just think they're a reflection of society. I don't think they're doing anything wrong, really. I think they're a reflection of society. In the same way, the Joshua Smollett case, we have to all kind of blame ourselves, right? We have to blame us collectively. As um John, what's his name? John McWarfer said on Don Lemon the other day, um, which is a really good clip. I'll, I'll, I'm just going to share the article here and I'll put a link of the clip. But John McWhorfer, um made a little commentary about the whole Juicy Smollett case. And he was saying basically like, you know, this is, our, this is our responsibility and us as in society, as in humanity, where we've kind of, you know, got in a position where we are raising up, um, we're putting on a platform victimhood, right? So victimhood now has become chic, right? It's become something coveted, right? Someone, we, someone, we're looking for oppression in order to become an activist, in order to get involved, right? Which is, which might be, a, which might be, in my opinion, it might be something to do with the whole. Do you know you? You've always, I've always heard, in my opinion, or I've heard. I'm not sure if you guys are paying attention, but uh, maybe um, you haven't or you don't care. But I've always heard 
it's said, especially among fashion designers, that there's no subcultures anymore, right? Back in the day, you had subcultures, right? That would influence a collection or that, you know, would be a guiding light for the youth coming up, right? But nowadays, it doesn't really exist so much, right? Because, you know, social media kind of flattens the playing field. We see everything around. Stuff happens at breakneck speed at the same time, right? Um, so they can't necessarily exist in that regard. But um, if there is a subculture that does exist, right? It would, or I'd, I think the lack of subculture is probably is reason why we have this victimhood thing because people are looking for something to rally behind, right? They don't really have anything, right? Um, they're looking for something to get behind to say, I am this, right? So and activism, is, activism has become one of those things because activism is something that is quite noble. I think by and large, even if people don't re- agree with your, uh, um, your intent, I think the act of like getting up onto a stage, right? With a microphone and talking really clearly succinctly um in depth about a topic that really hits home to you at the risk of your career or um, taking a nosedive is something quite admirable right because you know sometimes you know being an activist and standing up to the man you are at odds with other things that you have no idea about right corporate sponsors or it, so it could put it could really put in jeopardy your whole career so the fact that you're putting yourself on the line for these noble social causes is something that a lot of people think wow that's really admirable because you know you're a celebrity you don't need to do it. you can just go back to your mansion and you know get your dick sucked seven million times and no one would fucking know right um but you're stepping out into the into the streets and you're really fucking going for it so it's something noble about that and sometimes but i think somehow People think the only way to get on that stage is to have like a woe is me thing, right? You have to have a story. You have to have something that happened to you for us to get on that stage. People ask us to believe you. We have to, we have to have that as part of your thing. And that's the sad thing about it, just a small thing, isn't it? Because he, he was at that place where he didn't think, you know, he didn't, again, it's all allegedly because we don't know that, you know, he's still, Jesse Smollett is still fucking dying on that lie, which I guess you have to do, right? I think we've all kind of done that when you've lied and someone said, and someone's called you out for it and you just don't admit it, right? <laughs> you just keep going and going. I know I've done it. Um, and then I think the next day I felt super guilty and kind of rung the person back and said, look, I was lying, man. Do you know what I mean? Like, but I think in a moment when someone calls you out on it, you're so embarrassed, right? You don't want to lose face that you just keep going for the lie. But I think there is a part of you that has to say, if it's your friends or if it's people that you care about, you have to tell them the truth. And I think that's a just a similar thing I'm a bit, you know, which is a bit sad, you know, supposedly after the filming, um, not after he, after he got released on bond or on bail from the police station or whatever it may be, I think they took his passport so he couldn't travel. He went to the um, Empire Studios and went to go sit down with all his, uh, you know, fellow castmates or former castmates, former castmates, whatever they may be, and basically, you know, expressed his regret at what happened and saying sorry if he caused an embarrassment to his family and friends. But he maintained, supposedly, that he's innocent, right? That the police are out to get him, you know, whatever. Whatever his story is. So he's still saying this story is true, which is fucking crazy, right? Because, you know, if you believe the leaks, the two brothers have said, no, he we planned it together. <laughs> so I don't know what angle he's going for, but I guess, you know, that lie you have to die on the hill. But I just think there's something... There's something about your friends you just have to always you should always fess up to, right? If it's your friend, they should know the truth. The outside world can get whatever they want to get. You don't, you don't owe us an explanation, but your actual friends, the people that you are actually purported to be, you know, friends with, and they mean so much to you. You know, people that you go on stage and you win an Oscar and be like, oh, I want to thank all my my classmates. You guys are like a family to me. They say that stuff. If they are actual family to you, you should tell them the truth, right? But I guess, like I said, you know, when you when you make a lie, you have to down that hill. Um, but again, like I said, um. Victimhood has been raised onto a pulpit, as John McWhorter said, and now it seems like if you're an actor on a really big, you know, Empire is a huge show. It might not be, it might not be to your taste, it might not be to my taste, but it's a very huge show, right? It's been renewed season after season. That it still gets good ratings. Um, the actors on it are very highly regarded. It's a good show to be on for someone like a, a Jesse Smollett, right? He gets to do some music, he gets to perform, he gets to act, he gets to do, he gets to do some music on there. It's helping his stand, his music outside of um, his acting. So, by and large, on paper, it's a good platform. But supposedly, he was upset about the pay. He wasn't getting as much parity as um, Terence Howard and Tar- Taraji, whatever it, Taraji P. Henson. So, he's annoyed at that. But, dude, man, Jesus Christ. Like, can you just negotiate? Like, it's just embarrassing. And I, I, just, I just feel embarrassed for him, man. I just feel, I swear. I know it's a lie he made up for himself. I just feel embarrassed, right? That he had to, this is what he felt was a good idea to do. Because again, that's the thing that people don't, meant, that's the thing that people don't realize, right? Let's look at the bad side of it. Imagine if the police ended up finding, because luckily for um, Jesse Smollett's consciousness, 
the people on the CCTV cameras were supposed to be those two Nigerian brothers, right? But luckily, the CCTV footage didn't pick up any or any other two dudes walking that night, right? It was because it was quite cold late at night. It only picked up those guys in the time range they were looking for. But imagine if the camera picked up two random white dudes walking past at the same time or walking within that time frame and they picked them up. What would happen? He would have innocently put two guys in prison who had nothing to do with it. Because you remember, he did say that CCTV footage, he believes those two people were the ones that attacked him. I don't know, man. I just, I just feel embarrassed for the guy, man. I've got to be honest, I feel super embarrassed. But I recommend you check out this article. It's by the great John McWarfer. It's on the Atla- it's in the Atlantic. Um, uh, let me get this up here. Uh, uh, it's in the Atlantic. It's there on my screen. It's called "What Juicy Smollett Story Reveals." It and it sub the subtitle says it shows um a peculiar aspect of 21st century America, victimhood chic, which is very true. I reckon you check it out. It's a really good article. It kind of lays out um some of the things that I've been talking about in terms of you know victimhood becoming the new um you know the new f- the new form of social currency uh people being quick to kind of associate themselves with these issues and stand next to it in the same way you saw these celebrities coming out and automatically you know posting stuff about you know posting memes or posting little cl- um uh, quotes of malcolm x and talking about justice mullet him got talking to talking about talking about himself like the gay tupac and all this sort of shit right um you can see you know like there is we're feeding into this fucking bullshit unfortunately um but yeah check it out it's a really good article and again it's just embarrassing man i just feel embarrassed even talking about it even for him it's just like ugh, geezer man jesus christ but again he did he laid it he made his bed so he can lay in that bad boy next on the list next on the list oh yeah so the remember i talked about the zero three two c cosmo or cosmis workshop cosmic workshop collection that was kind of inspired by rave culture or club culture right yeah so some better pics of it have come out it's annoying how how long it takes for his fashion stuff to drop in it i saw these images ages ago and it still hasn't been released on stores i want to buy the fucking stuff anyway they highlighted it, a few of the collection here on on hype beats and it looks fairly 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 interesting as much as how interesting as i knew it would look um i think they debuted this collection during london fashion week which is weird because it's a berlin-based brand it would have made more sense to them to maybe debut him during berlin fashion week which isn't that well regarded and stuff maybe put more a bit more light on berlin fashion week but you know that's neither here or there um but here's a cosmic workshop collection i've got here up on my screen from 032c um they made a lookbook for it, so I'm assuming the collection should be dropping soon in stores. And by and large, I'm a big fan of it. They've got, again, the bondage pieces, loads of tie-dye um, tying into it. Um, I think these shoes that they are on the screen now, collaboration with 032 c and Adidas is too. Why am I not saying properly? 032 c and Adidas 2. Um, they look a little bit similar to the Yeezy boots that came out a while back, right? The rats, whatever, the desert rats, whatever. So the, I like the kind of shape on them. Um, they've got these nice little, uh, what do you call it, um, harness things that you put on the side of your jeans, which I've seen. The, who's the stylist for? Who's the stylist for? Or the fashion director for 032C? Um, I forgot his name. Um, Groening, something, Mark Groening, Go- Guring, right? Yeah. He wears, he's been wearing a lot of this stuff during the fashion weeks so when I've seen pictures of him on street style stuff. Um, let me get this off there and check the yeah, next one. Again, nice, nice pieces all together. Um, great shirts and stuff that I'm well interested in buying. Like even this lanyard, even this, um, kind of harness lanyard thing it looks really hard oh and the boots come in black as well i didn't know they look fucking banging so i'm really looking forward to this coming in stores hopefully it drops very soon it have a date here uh oh it's, it's okay it's launched already it launched on the 21st awesome check that out there um but yeah zero three two c uh cosmic collection and even this i think this long coat is my favorite as well and this fucking the workshop uh, t-shirt with the logo i think this long trench coat is my favorite look of the entire collection i can't wait to check it out and get a few pieces because i was I, I was always you know that zero three two cm jumper with the rose on the back of it that everyone got that sold out i really regret not buying that man that was one of my favorite jumpers back in the day um or in the early kind of period when um cali do it was um doing a few things for them as well the guy that did all the um early user stuff and whatever but yeah anyway check that out zero three two c cosmic workshop collection dropping it's dropped already i think on the tw- on 21st should be available on other stores uh, two ba, 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 ba. let's move on to something else here nike sb orange label collection this looks fucking awesome something that i thought they should have done a long time ago um so it looks like again the copy on this article isn't the greatest because you know it's high beast so they generally just copy and paste stuff they get on press releases or they don't but it looks like um, 
Nike are doing these um, orange label collections, which are basically, you know, black and white with gum sole um, on most of their SBs, um, on their entire SB line. Um, they do this anyway, I'm pretty sure, with Dunks. I'm pretty sure they do it. There's a couple of models they do it anyway. Like every season, they'll have like a black and white option. I'm pretty sure. I don't hold. Me. I think I'm pretty sure they do. There's like always, but I think it's black and white with a black sole. But they always do like a, a standard colorway that they kind of you know um, put, have an offer for skate shops to buy. Um, but now they have like I'm hoping they carry this forward as a core collection where they just keep it reiterating. You know, it's like the white Air Force One. The all black Air Force One, the Air Force One Mid, Air Force One High. Just they just you know they're in season in season now. The time is peace. And I think for Nike SB, especially since they're kind of steering in the direction of making these kind of you know newer models, it makes sense to have the retros be available in these kind of bog standard classic colorways that you don't even need to fucking try them on. You just keep ordering them again and again. If you're a skater and you fuck up your shoes um after like six months of wear, which most guys do if they're skating all the time, um you can just keep buying them. You can just keep buying a new pair all the time, all the time, all the time. probably even less than six months, I think you'd probably fuck up a pair if you're skating every day or if you're pro. So imagine you just keep buying them all the time and not having to kind of think about it. And this shoe here and this collection here kind of proves the fact that they got here done. And again, really just nicely done. Um, it looks like new buck as well. Alpha, so fucking sweet, fucking lush um, looking once that kind of gets some grip, sta grip tape wear and tear all over it. Um, again, just with them. I'm always a big fan of that, especially um, new buck in terms of like a dark color, like a dark brown, dark navy, dark black. When it gets weathered a little bit, I think it looks fucking really cool and interesting, especially for skate, skate shoe. So black upper, white swoosh gum sole, classic kind of colorway. You can't really go wrong with it in general. Uh, fat tongue, I'm hoping one of the dunk lows well as they did before. You've got dunk mid, which has been a popular shoe. They've got the gatto that um, Supreme did a couple of se uh, se couple of seasons ago. They've got the SB blazer. They've got the Bruin, which I've not seen in a long time. Do you remember when the Bruin, when Hiroshi was doing a, a collaboration with them? I think Hiroshi might have been responsible for making the brew in a thing in it right because it's not the most it's not the most beautiful of shoe is it it's a bit butters but um hiroshi fujua did a couple collaborations with them which i obviously bought because i'm a hiroshi fujua fanboy um but by and large i don't think they would have got the love they would have got without him um putting his little stamp on it but again just classic shoes um black uppers um, gum soles you can't really go wrong with these so these are available i think now at the moment right since the article should be I imagine so. E oh, they're they're available in March the first. So check those out to purchase again. Um, orange label collection, classic, classic colorways. Um, again, I don't know why they call it orange label collection. I'm not too sure why that's being called that. But um, again, classic shoes, classic colorways. Being able to buy now, you can again steer back in if you're involved in that kind of dunk resurgence trend that people try to do on social media. Then maybe this is something that you should be involved with too. But I quite like the Gatto. I think the Gatto for me would be a good shoe. But if again, if I could skate well and my feet weren't as wide, I think I would wear them. But they're quite pointy, you know, because they're essentially an, an indoor soccer shoe. So they've got a bit of a point to it, which is already a little bit annoying to me. But hey ho, what can you do? All right, that. Let's move on up. Da, 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 da. Um. What else is here? Oh, Balenciaga Triple S designer launches uh, his uh, his new line of shoes. Yeah. So um these um this came out the other day article um it's it was it kind of interesting or kind of not depending on what you want to say to it um so the design so I've supposedly the design of the triple S shoe which I'm not too sure if that's true um because you know we've all done it right we you know you've been at a company and you you know, you you part of a project and you move to another company and then you say that you're responsible for leading or spearheading this fucking project when it wasn't really you, you know what I mean you're just part of the team that did it. Um, but you know it's more fun to say it's you and obviously and of course the, the company can't check if it was you in it really for the most part so you take credit for it but you were part of a team that did it did you contribute to the name did you help out to launch a site did, are you were you part of the people monitoring the project cool but was you responsible for doing the whole thing probably not so we all kind of you know fabricate the truth and when it comes to lying and CVs I don't and I think does a person exist out there that hasn't lied on their CV like even a little bit like you know and i mean and i mean in the most innocent way possible whether it's like you know you were at a company for less than a year but then you rounded it up to a year or whether it was um you worked as an assistant but you left the assistant bit off your list or whatever it may be has anyone done that because i know i haven't and in the beginning i did and in the beginning i was so naive like uh, i think i mentioned this a few times before on a podcast but it took me ages to get my first job i think i might have got my first job when i was 19 right or something like that and um this isn't because i was a fucking rich kid because i wasn't because we were fucking dirt poor when, when, I, when i was young but um and i always needed a fucking job because i knew i wouldn't be able to get any bits of money before that but 
Um, luckily, between the time of like 16 and 19, I kind of discovered sneakers and I was reselling shoes. So I was able to make money that way. But it took me ages to get my first job uh, because I was saying the truth for my CV. Right. Um, because think about it. Right. I went to college, went to sixth form, didn't have any job there. And then I was trying to apply for jobs, you know, pre-uni and then during university. And when I'm going to hand out my CVs and I've got no experience apart from the two weeks of work experience that you do when you're in sixth, is it sixth form. No, you do whenever you do. Is it? I think you're eleven, right? You do work experience when you have to go. And I, I went to do work experience at a weird fucking electronic shop um, on Charing Cross Road. Like you know those electronic shops that sell everything. They have a digital camera, security systems, memory cards. Like fucking, just it's insane the amount of stuff they sell, right? And I did it for two weeks in in this store somewhere in West London, um, which was a fucking you know hellhole. Um, the guy I did it with. Um, from my school he quit after three days because it was that shit essentially we were like stuck in the basement um rearranging a stock room that probably hadn't been rearranged in a decade right imagine those kind of old electronic shops where like even the boxes are old right old design boxes like logos are not used anymore just fucking just shit upon shit stocked in this store right i don't know how they're still in business but maybe because it's just a property thing i don't know but um i remember working there that was the only experience i had on my cv so when i go to hand out my cv i'd have you know two weeks work experience working in a fucking electronics store in, in central London that no one knows about so of course i wouldn't get a job and it went on for ages until i realized i don't know who i spoke you know when you speak to somebody and then you get you're like oh that's what i've been doing wrong i spoke to somebody and they kind of i don't know they kind of maybe laughed at the fact that i was saying the truth in my cv and i was like oh so everyone does this right and i thought okay cool and the moment i started to lie and started to fabricate and i invented a couple of stuff on my cv and said i worked here and i didn't work there or whatever it may be or i got a job straight away straight away oh the fucking look at this look at these hedging glasses look what happens just <laughs> Lows. but yeah the, the moment i lied on my cv is the moment i straight away got a job i got i got high straight away the moment i started lying so um it wouldn't it wouldn't um it, it, i wouldn't be surprised if whoever did design the triple s or whoever was part of designing a shoe part of the manufacturing part of the produ production would then leave and then say they designed that triple s shoe because you know it's a fucking great shoe um i don't wear it as often as i should wear it because you know it's not the most comfortable shoe in the world I actually have a pair here there right i've actually fucked up a little bit which is not h hard to do because i don't wear them as much as i should but can you see them there there they are bah, bah, bah. get that into frame come on get into frame get into frame there you see that, yeah? I don't wear them as much, as much as I should do, but they're a great shoe, right? And they'll probably go down in history because, you know, they they um, uh, invent what without probably realizing it, right? They were probably responsible for um, the emergence of the chunky shoe trend, right? Without the Balenciaga Triple S, I probably don't think we get the fucking cascading wave of trip of of of, of thick sole shoes. Because it's weird too, because you know the Jaden boot I've got the Dr. Martin Jaden, right? I was wearing that for years when I was working at Dr. Martin's. I wore it every day. Um, I wore my Jaden boot so much that I had to get a new pair. I wore them out, like wore them out. I used to go everywhere out of them, right? They, they were my those were my Dalston shoe of choice. And but they're only only really girl girls wore them and not really and not that many girls wore them to be honest at that time but mostly only girls wore them and um but now I've everywhere I go I see people wear, wear that that double sole Jaden shoe it's really strange it's a bit of a slow burner it took a while for it to get popular but now everyone's wearing them again it probably has to say it probably has a lot more to do with the fact that you know uh chunky shoes are in now so people maybe feel a bit more confident to wear them there's not as much social risk. Because people are a bit risk averse, they don't want to look like a weirdo in front of their friends. So now that chunky soul shoes are in, wearing a double sole Dr. Dr. Martin doesn't seem that obscene when you have something like this, right? Out there, and you have people wearing those technos, those Nike technos are really popular, um, and a few other, and the Monarchs, which are really big shoes. But anyway, um, so this guy from Balenciaga, anyway, this is a long way to say that this guy from Balenciaga, supposedly from Balenciaga, um, decided to launch his own collection of shoes, which I saw on Hypebeast the other day. Um, they look quality wise again just from screen they don't look that great right and um, they look like you know they look like the kind of shoe that you could get made in china if you had a sketch but i think overall the, the idea is there you could probably see some lineage coming from the triple s design shoe especially the back of it right how it kind of extends out a little bit here you see this bit there can uh, my cursor there like i think this back bit there you can kind of see some lineage in it overall um again i'm not it's not necessarily a shoe for me i don't think um i'd probably have to maybe see it in real life to maybe get an act an actual representation of what it looks like um but you know interesting colors i'm sure people would like it and i think it's quite cheap too what's it called so it's called the shoes three five four zero three five why can't i say the number when it's right there 
53045, which is, you know, maybe the worst name in history. But, um, who's, who's, what's, what's his name after helping? What's his name? Uh, David Tor, Tornane Bucell. Um, is it Tornay Bucell? I think that, may, that might be French, right? Has more than 25 years um, in footwear design and is currently still works under Demina in Balenciaga while serving as creative director at Claire. I don't know what Clojure is. Um, Dub the shoe, spells shoes backwards. Uh, the label is created to express a non-traditional footwear option that mixes European design with the athletic technology developed by the Chinese manuf- by Chinese manufacturers. <laughs> Loves athletic technology, Chinese manufacturers in the same sentence. Um, with the inaugural release, Torain and co-founder Uria Amor, a former LVMH and carried, yeah, of course, this is all French. It looks like it's a thick double sole packed with salt. It's priced at $400, which is quite cool, isn't it? $400 is very cheap compared to... And why did they say direct to consumer? Uh, well, when will direct to consumer fall out of the current lexicon, right? Everything is direct to consumer. You should be able to buy things that you want from the store, from the brand that you um, are going to on their online store. That should just be like an, uh, a standard thing. It's not like a, oh, it's direct to consumer. Wow. It's not that big of a deal, really, right? Or am I, or am I bugging out? It's direct to consumer. That's how everything should be. Yeah. I want to buy a Panasonic camera. I should go on Panasonic.com and click cameras and be able to buy and have it shipped to my house right or go on amazon it's not that it's not that big of a deal but again fashion fetishizes the weirdest things oh direct to consumer it's like huh of course like like the other day i was watching a show studio panel and they were freaking out that products are starting to do instagram stories i was like but it's just of course like this is this is this is this is the time you live in like you have do you have to in order to kind of get your message out there to distribute the stuff that you're doing you have to be on social media and a big part of social media is instagram instagram has a feature called instagram stories you use the fucking app like i don't get why that was so weird but anyway go out to your shoes um again you've got red and orange colorway they look similar colorways to the kind of um uh what's that shoe called the hoka one one uh, the, or the hookah Hookah one one Hokkaido or where have you you pronounce it? Um, similar sort of colorways. You got red and orange, or orange and red, the light blue and um, white, which is probably my favorite color. I like it with a black sole. Um, it looks quite interesting, right? So you got a midsole and then you've got the bubble in. No, you have got the the outsole and then the, the bubble inside the midsole, which is a really interesting way to do the shoe. It looks like some of the paneling there on the back might be see through. Again, the quality doesn't look the best, but again, it's the first run, right? So maybe they might need to they might need to slowly iterate it out. I'm surprised they also manufactured it in China because I know these, um, the triple S's that I have here, the first ones, the original ones, they they were, these are Italian made, right? But then they switched factories because I think it cost them too much to make in Italy. So now they're all made in China. Um, so maybe, I was surprised that they started, they didn't start off making them in Italy first. But then again, maybe just because, you know, they were there when they were manufacturing them in, in Italy for the Blanchard triple S's and see how much it was. So it probably wasn't, it didn't probably make economical sense to do your first collection and launch them maybe in Italy, maybe. Um, but, you know, they've got all black pair, which probably is quite nice. Maybe looks a little bit similar to the Buffalo sneakers I've seen people wear. But yeah, by and large, pretty decent, I think, for, for it. $400 cheaper than most uh, designer triple S designer triple s looking shoes out there on the market um again i'm interested to see how they develop it and go forward maybe we're going to see a mid maybe we're going to see a high um some other iterations of it coming out or maybe different models different ranges because now the triple s is updated you know they, they maybe they might just update the materials and kind of make it like a modular you know those modular phones that you take bits off and put them on other bits and pieces or whatever and put other bits on it maybe they might do a similar thing they do with the triple s because the triple s now i think the sole they've got like a clear sole like an eye sole they haven't necessarily updated the model or they've just updated the classic panels on it um the updated models of the triple s weren't as popular as the original one i've i've seen i've not seen that many people wearing them you know the one that has got less pan less um paneling on it and it's all mostly nylon you've seen those ones right then the ones that came out in the last couple of seasons they weren't as popular as the original one so maybe they can recognize it in the sales and probably think you know what let's just kind of let's just keep re-releasing the original by just changing elements of it different color blocking and stuff so interesting to see how they develop it overall but it's called the uh, shoes um free five three zero four five i can't say the numbers which is shoes built backwards um it's available now online on their website um which is shoes five three zero four five dot com um price at four hundred dollars um so yeah check that out if you're interested in double big soul shoes um da, 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 da. oh and if you're short as well they're, they're a great compliment if you're a short dude right and you don't want to wear fucking cuban heels or whatever um tip um chunky soul shoes number one earn you cool points because you've got you know trendy shoes on number two they're a talking point because you know the date or whatever you're seeing is gonna be, oh my god love your shoes and number three you get some inches on you without having to fucking break your shins or whatever 
Because it's do you hear that there's people that do that. Uh, was it? Am I dreaming or did I see an article of a lady that um got uh surgery to make herself taller and they did something with her heels? Have you seen that? And it, they somehow broke her heel and extended it up or something. That what happened there? I wonder, but I'm pretty sure that happened. And I saw another video, I think from BuzzFeed, one of those fucking garbage videos they do where they interview people in the office and ask them to do a challenge or whatever they do. But I saw one where they were going around reviewing these inner soles that are specifically aimed at people guys that are short to go inside your shoes, like healed inner soles, which is fucking insane, right? Because I remember when I was suffering from my kind of uh, plantar fasciitis before I kind of figured out that most of it was due to my lack of mobility, um and my lack of um you know um deep tissue work i discovered case direct but when i was kind of doing the standard stuff people do on the internet and i was trying to get inserts of you know inner soles to make sure my feet weren't in pain instead of actually addressing the pain i remember thinking oh wow these these insoles really give you extra kind of inches in it you feel a bit taller because obviously those those um plantar fasciitis um uh insoles are really thick you can buy some from Foot Locker or wherever it may be they're super thick like really chunky they've got some sort of cushioning on it and I thought, oh, these, these would be cool, isn't it? If you wanted to be a bit taller. But I didn't think there was an actual industry. There was some market to that dude to make them taller where they kind of have a bigger heel to make you stand up a little bit like that. Like, you know those um those uh, Isabel Marant sneakers that everyone was wearing for a while? Those girls were wearing those kind of, you know, sneakers that kind of had a bit of a heel, but there was all, all hidden inside. Fucking insane, isn't it, really? Absolutely insane. But again, I think maybe it's a natural selection thing, isn't it, for dudes, right? It's like the hair. Maybe guys think that, you know, their their ability to reproduce with a female dwindles or the fact that they have. Because, you know, maybe they think intrinsically that girls, when they see your hair is thinning, they think that or you're, when you're losing your hair, it's a sign that you're going to die. And maybe if you're sure, it's a sign that you can't maybe protect them or be a good provider, which is fucking garbage. But, you know, for the most part, if, I, if I'm a dude, if I'm if I would have always said if I was short. I'd wear it on my. Sh- I'd wear it. I'd wear it well. If I my hair was going, I wouldn't die. If I my hair was going grey, I wouldn't die. I wouldn't fucking you know wear a fucking wig or get hair replacement surgery. I'll just ride it out. I think guys can do it, but you know if you're a girl, you can fucking paint your face like a fucking painting, right? You you can honestly. The amount of cheating, especially how, when you look at these images, supposedly of jo- that Jordan Woods girl post surgery and pre- or if you believe that she did get surgery or didn't, but fucking hell, man, guys guys don't have that much to play with, do they? Really, isn't it? You can just get, you can lose weight, get fit, and you can maybe dress better. That is it. Even personal hygiene, no, not personal hygiene, even like self care stuff for guys isn't that great, even. Like, you can get, you can exfoliate, you can make your skin amazing, you can maybe have the skin of fucking Pharrell and shit, but you, there's nothing else that you can really do to yourself to make yourself look hotter or to make yourself look more attractive to the opposite, opposite sex or to the same sex, whatever you're into. There's nothing more you can do if you're a dude. There's nothing you can do. That's what you can do. Lose weight and wear better clothes. Or wear clothes that fit you better, right? That's it. That's all you can do. Whereas if with a girl, you can actually... Like, I've seen videos of girls on online on YouTube, right? Doing contouring where they, they're actively trying to make it look like they have cheekbones. There's a guy that's like... A girl that's like 300 pounds, right? She's 300 pounds, 5 foot 1, she's like super obese. And she's painting her face, right? And trying to make sure that she has cheekbones. What's that about? Tell me. <laughs> Can the guy do that? Can a guy paint a six pack onto his, onto his fucking belly? Huh? Can a guy some somehow you know paint fucking biceps right? Or forearms or like fucking chest pecs or chest ticks, chest tits. I don't know what the fuck, man. Honestly, you can't do much if you're a dude. You really can't do much, right? And. Even trying, imagine trying to get funny. Imagine if you're a guy and you're not funny and you're trying to be funny, especially in like a loosey goosey, casual way, right? That's mostly what g- girls like, right? Not the kind of stand up funny guy, but just, you know, you're funny. Imagine trying to be funny when you're not funny. You, it's hard to do, right? And you have to do that in order to kind of, just to, just to have the possibility to kind of get a mate, to reproduce, to extend your lineage. And girls can fucking, you know, blow to be 300 pounds and paint them se- their face to make them look skinny. Wear spanks to fucking hide all the flab, and then when it comes off, it all kind of cascades around. Like, <sighs> anyway, it's just, it's just, an, it's just it, the game is the game is rigged. But so somehow, you know, these, there's some women out there that are fucking saying that they're oppressed and they're heroes because they stand up on a stage and talk very passionately about a po- topic. Like, come on, man, we all have we all have privileges, right? Let's just recognize it. Everyone has their own little privilege, right? 
Normally, when a guy comes around, everyone assumes he's going to get the job done, right? Naturally, when a woman comes around, everyone assumes things are going to be okay and she's going to put things into order and she's going to be in charge of looking after people. We all have our little privileges, right? All my people think of that, right? Like, it is what it is. Let's just, let's just recognize it, accept it, and try and work together. But let's not pretend we're playing a fair game here, right? Girls have a better... Girls pick. You're amazing. You've done it. You pick. You get to choose your mates. You get to say, nope, 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 yeah, yeah, nope, nope. You get to pick. We don't get to pick. We just get what we're given. Especially if you're a guy, especially if you have no game and you're a dude, you get what you're given, mate. You literally have no choice. You get what you're given. If you have no game, or if you're shy, or if you don't like talking to people in public, or you don't like to be on social media and use those apps, what, um, dating apps, whatever it may be, you are fucked. You have to get what you're given. If it lands in your lap, it lands in your lap. If it doesn't, oh well. It's mad, man. It's fucking mad. It's fucking mad. <sighs> anyway, what do I know? What do I know? Um, what else? Let's 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 move on here. Let's move on here. Let's move on here. Let's move on here. Oh, yeah, Stone Island Spring Summer 2019. This looks fucking sick, man. Stone Island um recently did a lookbook. Would you call it? Would you say yeah? It's a lookbook, right? Um, oh, sorry, CP Company, not Stone Island. CP Company did a lookbook um starring uh reggie snow uh the uh, I, the, the 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 irish born rapper and it's fucking cool um i think it's who's it shot by uh it's shot by someone really cool as well who's it shot by ba, 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 photographer say who the photographer is loads of fucking text here um who's the photographer here doesn't say who the photographer is i don't know it doesn't say who the photographer is on here just loads of fucking text for no reason. But anyway, um, it's a really good um lookbook with Reggie Snow. I recommend you check it out. It looks fucking awesome. Probably the best I've seen um of what CP looks like actually worn by real people in its actual natural em- uh, environment. Um, Reggie Snow obviously's got the fucking hard, hard Prada sports on there. They look fucking awesome. Again, just a really good lookbook overall. It makes you want to buy everything that CP Company make. Just a shame the jackets are so fucking expensive. Um. But anyway, the quality has always fucking been up there. And again, just a really fucking good lookbook. I really recommend you check it out. Loads of really great pieces in there. Um, goggle jackets, of course, that we all know and love. And just really, just really cool jackets overall, isn't it? Great technology, um, great fabrication, and great styling in general too, right? Like, you can't honestly go wrong with anything that's on here. Like, look, these are great shots. Like, awesome, awesome shots. Like, you want literally everything that the, the, these people are advertising in these fucking lookbooks, isn't it? Don't you? I know I do. I know I do. Like, look at this. Look how good this looks. In the woods, a camo as well. Nice fleeces. It looks fucking awesome, man. Eas- easily one of my favorite lookbooks I think I've seen this season. Um, I recommend you check it out. I think it's, it's him before talking about in Ireland too, right? I don't think you can get these woods anywhere in the UK. Again, just a great collection. I'm a real big fan of it. So check it out. Register now in this CP company lookbook. Just looks fucking banging, man. Absolutely fucking banging. Big fan of it. I mean, I am. Big, big fan of it. Um, Moving on in, moving on up. What else is next here? <coughs> um, uh, Noah NYC Spring 2019 Collection 2. All the Spring 2019 collections are dropping, right? Every lookbook is coming out. Or every or the first beachy delivery drops. Um, who's a big fan of Noah? I am big, big fan of Noah. I went to the Noah store a couple of years ago when I was working for a previous company. I was at when we had to do some filming, and um, I really loved the guys when we met them. Uh, Brenda Babazian was there. A few of the other guys in the store who are kind of quite well known have been the streetwear retail space, which was quite cool to see. Actually, there is a there that still exists in New York. You know, and that retail mafia thing that happened during the early 2000s, right? With all the New York thing, store, Supreme, Iraq. Um, what else is there? Is it married to mom or something else? I've got all the other stores. Is it? Oh, when did I forget the other stores? There was Stash's thing. Who else was there? Fuck, there, there was a few stores anywhere around during the whole retail mafia era, right? And this is when, you know, shop assistants, especially, maybe it started with Supreme or maybe it started with Stussy, or maybe it was a union thing, but there was a time in, there was a time in place where store assistants were like celebrities, many kind of style icons, right? Because obviously they got the, the delivery of the first things. They were usually featured in the lookbooks for the shop themselves. They were all over the blogs, blah, blah, blah. They became larger than life kind of figures, right? Or larger than brand sort of figures. And even when they left, they were still um, intrinsically, or they were, they were still commonly associated with the brand that they were used to work at, right? Um, 
Uh, you can think of numerous examples. One at first that comes to my head is Aaron Bondroff, right? He was kind of, you know, the quintessential supreme celebrity at the time, right? And I remember the, in, when that first happened, that period, I used to be on a forum and I had a picture of one of the guys just working at Supreme Store as my avatar. And I quite remember, which is quite funny how far things have come, somebody on a forum that lived in New York and knew who the guy was as my avatar was like, you know, if it effectively emailed or sent me a PM on the forum saying, oh, that's gay. Why do you have a picture of another guy that works in a storage avatar? Like, like why you'd what no i think you said that, why are you impersonating him which is fucking bizarre right because you only have to go on twitter now and see the landscape of the amount of people that have mezzard ozil in their fucking username on twitter who aren't mezzard ozil have a picture of mezzard ozil on their avatar right they're not obviously they're not they're not pretending to be him but they just you know that's the name that they want they don't want to use their real name and people do that all the time and no one ever thinks oh you're trying to pretend to be mezzard ozil but at that time i guess you know early so early internet early kind of social media influencer scene influencer thing didn't really exist right i think if you would have told somebody in 2001 that we'd live in a time where people on social media would be paid or there'll be a thing called social media and people would be paid to be themselves like you know posting pictures of avocado on toast and shit people would laugh laugh you out of the bank right they'd be like what you don't have to have a talent you have to play guitar and people will pay you money just to stand around um with your outfit and not wear clothes that you made and just wear clothes you bought in a store somewhere that'll be a thing that people paid for people would laugh at you right but it happens now um and you know a few of the guys i saw noah were of those people because a lot of people were coming in saying safe to them they were getting big ups from the sh like we were standing out uh, outside with one or two of the guys and you know, they were smoking and you know numerous people in fucking fit skate bikes were out there shouting their name and saying what's up and shit i was like oh it reminds me of back in the day when like you know there was a little bit of a celebrity aura around some of the shop assistants that used to work around london which obviously inevitably especially in london which made them like which made them into cunts in it really for the most part um they decided they were more important than what they actually were and decided to treat you with absolute discontent right with contempt which is you know standard par par of course for you know um london retail employees right who think that you know i don't know bigger than a brand or something you know I don't know, whatever, maybe. Um, but they got those guys are really cool, and I again, it shouldn't really matter, but there is something about liking a brand online and then meeting the person behind it and them actually being cool, right? It's like the opposite of the Palace thing, right? Um, I I like Palace, and then I meet Le or I don't meet Lev, I bump into him when um, I'm at the Nike store, and he's just generally a bit of a cunt, right? Again, it might have been a bad day, he might have been um, not in the mood to talk. I might be a stranger, he might not like the look on my face, but wherever, just a bit of a cunt, and everyone around it cunts too so i've just stopped wearing the brand right never never wore it since that day right I had my little mini protest which doesn't doesn't fucking matter who fucking cares about my dollar right uh, especially if you've got kids lining up all around the block to buy your shit who cares about what i have to say about anything but again that's just my own personal thing action but the opposite can happen too when you meet somebody when you love a brand you meet them in real life and they're just fucking safe right and that brendan does the same thing right he has all the reasons to be a fucking dickhead. He has all the reason he wants to be an absolute up his own ass, egotistical maniac, right? He's worked at Supreme. He was part of the fucking fabric of that brand. He was probably um, um, very instrumental in some of the, my favorite pieces that that came during that time. I was like, oh, I think there's someone cleaning on the hallway. Um, that came during that era, right? He's, he's kind of status in the streetwear industry. is kind of solid, solidified, right? He can be a dickhead if he wants to. But he goes out of his way not to be. He goes out of his way to be super calm, super chill, really personable. He, he was always coming up the whole time we were there talking. He was, he was coming up again and again to talk and have conversations. He was very honest in the, in the kind of, you know, in how he wanted to be represented in the fucking things that he wanted to do, if he wanted to do or not. Very personable. He takes he takes a lot of time in, in writing those kind of really long articles about, you know, um, environmental issues things that he's really passionate about and just generally just comes across as a good dude and um, i'm happy that the brand's doing really well basically isn't it? um it's like, that's a long way to go about saying it if things really popular people are really into it and it's kind of picking up pace a little bit it's, it's kind of picking up the level of quality and production season and season that you can really tell you're just reinvesting any money that he makes it's making a brand even better than what it is they've opened up a couple of stores in new in in japan i've heard rumors of them opening a store in london don't hold me to it but i've heard rumors it might not be true um but by and large they're doing very very good stuff and i just like the i just love the pieces and i think they've over time um they have very much so um carved out a portion of the market for themselves on image right they're not necessarily like it, um i think just like gosha Brzezinski, which probably don't want to wear anymore because of his re recent scandals but 
you can't mistake a Gosha Uzbekinski piece for anything else out there, right? It looks, regardless of what you like it or not, it looks like something Gosha would make. And I think Noah is in that same sort of category. I think before you could maybe confuse it with other brands, but now there is a specific um, Noah DNA, right? Classic pieces, um, done really well. Um, I don't know, inspired by the times gone by, things that you can wear in your wardrobe for season in, season out, very high quality pieces. Um, even the lookbooks have become a bit of a seminal piece in how they kind of launched the brand, launched the company, um, very interestingly done. And again, a um, new drop that kind of released this um, or dropped recently, um, which I'm debuting here. Well, not debuting, which I'm just showing on the screen. Debuting. Imagine me debuting collections on the podcast. Lols. But it might happen, you know. There might actually be a time. That could, that could actually be something that might happen in the future. Streetwear brands reaching out to podcasts and asking them to fucking feature stuff or, you know, uh, preview it before it drops. That would be fucking awesome, actually. Um, anyway, here we go. Um, nice bomber jackets. Again, just great stuff overall. Um, classic pieces. I think this might be a coach jacket. Is that a half zip? Oh, it's really interesting, right? It looks like a coach, but it's not. It's like a half 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 zip half button up coach really nicely done as well just again this hallelujah jumper or hoodie looks fucking awesome i'm sure that's gonna fucking sell out in a heartbeat the hoodies sell out really good really really quickly again nice jumper nice knits um great collection overall big fan of the stuff that brendan is doing over there at noah um and just high quality pieces man all very and well all, all fairly priced too oh this t-shirt's gonna be really popular i'm sure it's okay not to drink um <laughs> Which I'm sure all the fucking you know social media social media influencer type people will be all over this. This is fucking amazing t-shirt and a message which I'm sure a lot of people can resonate with, especially those people that you know are currently trying to stay away from the alcohol when all their friends want to meet up in bars only for some reason. I don't know why that is, but hey, um, uh, straight edge t-shirt. I'm assuming right the X's all over it. Um, motive there. Um, yeah, just generally good pieces that I'm a real big fan of, and I'm sure we're gonna sell out in the store very very soon oh nice bags too they've got waist bags here i didn't see these these are really nice again just nice retro inspired stuff in it it reminds you of something that you might pick up in a in a vintage store somewhere you're like, oh shit this is the perfect thing you're looking for but they just take it re-update it right adding some new technologies update the kind of even the fastening is retro done look look at that no trendy fastening no like you know weird buckle just really classic <coughs> clip that's the sound of a clip, basically, if you're under. I'm not choking. <laughs> and nice tote bags again. Just really cool stuff. Um, nice pin there. Amazing collection, as per usual, from Noah, which is going to be dropping... Well, soon? 21st? Um, oh, I love that hat. Really cool on that, girl. Really cute. Oh, it's already dropped on the 14th, so check that out. It should be available now online. NoahNYC.com, I think the website URL is, so... If you're in that way inclined and you want to have some classic staple pictures in your wardrobe, I recommend you check that out. NoahNYC.com. Anyway, um, need to wrap this up because I've got head off to work. This has been the Xeno Zinger Show, episode number 163. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company, have your ears. If you haven't already, please go listen to the Gigs album, Big Bad. It's fucking incredible. I've been playing it all weekend. I recommend you check it out. Gigs album, Big Bad. I'm not being paid to say that. I just fucking love him and I want everyone to love him too. Gigs Big Bad out right now. Check that out. For all regarding, for everything regarding me, check all regarding me, 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 me. Uh, check out my website, thexnozinger.com, um, defaultgoon.com for my blog. Um, all my dates, DJ things are on there. I'm going to be at the free compasses on next friday the 8th of uh, march so check me out there if you're in and around the area um and before if i don't see you before then have a good day right probably see you guys again tomorrow for another podcast <sighs> Peace.